Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Saint Park and we are back at it again. Two videos in one week. Let's go. Today we're gonna talk about very revolutionary gear. I know that sounds very 1700-ish, but yeah, this is from the future. And even if you're not getting this light, I think you should be aware of the fact that this light exists because this thing right here is different. So we're gonna be talking about pros and cons of this light and there's this one huge problem with this light which I will address and how to fix it. But first, let me introduce you to Juin Molus X100. Sent from the future to present to kill the darkness or a bad joke so like the name in the case this cob light is 100 watts guys and look at the size of this 100 watt light this light is also bicolor ranging from 2700 all the way to 6500 so huge range and it is very color accurate because it is 95 plus cri and 97 plus tlci and most interesting thing about this light is the fact that when you get a combo pack or above it comes with this battery which you can attach this right here Boom. And this gives you 100 watt full power. And if you don't want to use this attached, you can actually detach it. And there is a USB-C port right here. And you can connect that to a USB-C port that's actually behind this little rubber cover right here. So when you use a USB-C to USB-C connection from the battery, it gives you up to 30 watts or 30% power to this light. Now there are tons of accessories here. Juin basically made a whole entire ecosystem of this light. Uh, so let me show you guys a couple things that are worth mentioning. I think the most important is probably gonna be the Bowens mount. So the mount that is on the Juin light, this right here is a preparatory Juin mount. However, if you have a lot of Bowens attachment, you could attach this adapter directly on here like that. Now you can attach any Bowens accessory here, including big softbox. This is pretty sturdy and you can unlock this and swivel. It even has a hole for your umbrella. Now there are two Bowens mount adapters here, so you can't be confused. So there's one like this and there's one with a thicker lip. You guys see that gap right there? And that gap is required because there's a fan on here and then it needs to blow out some hot air. Now this smaller Bowens mount adapter is for a different light and that is a G60. So this is another brand new COB light Juin just came out with. So this adapter goes on to this light. As you can see, you don't need that big gap because the fan blows out hot air from here. So I'm gonna talk about this light maybe down the road because it's such a cool small light. But let's talk about another accessory. So this is so cool. All right, this right here, if I snap this like this, yeah, this is a tiny little cute, I mean, it's so miniature, so cute. <laughs> it's a tiny little soft box, guys. So this attaches to the X100, same exact way. But what's cool is that they also provide a grid. It's Velcroed. Yeah, look how tiny this thing is. Bam, you got your little miniature soft box. And of course, if you want a larger source of soft lighting, you have this large diffusion domes. And of course, if this is a little too big for your taste, it also comes with a smaller diffusion dome. So you can take off the diffusion dome rubber piece like this, and this becomes a small reflector to kind of have a narrow angle of light. And it works the same with the larger one, which will give you a wider angle, right? So something to note here, this came with the G60. So I'm not sure how they're gonna package this. So this thing came with the X100, right? And this came in with the G60. So something to double check if you really, really want the smaller version, but I really like the big ones actually. This one gives you a wider soft look, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this away before YouTube algorithm thinks this is something else. Okay, so even though I've been talking about the pros of this light already, let me show you guys the real pro of this light. This light, as you saw, is tiny guys, and there's no other form factor like it I've seen. You could literally put two of these together and be the size of like a camera body, or like a Canon camera body, but still. You could fit two 100 watt COB light in this package in your backpack. And just for size comparison, this is my trusted Godas SL60. So this is a 60 watt light, it's a daylight balance, and I am replacing this with this, and it still supports my softbox. And to make it even more versatile, let's talk about this battery pack. So this battery not only powers your light, this USB-C port can be used to charge other devices, so it's double functioning. So if you travel, this can be your power bank. On the spec sheet, it says that this battery when attached directly to the light, and at 100%, 100 watt full blast, it can last 30 minutes at 6300 Kelvin, which is a random number, but that's what's on the spec sheet. But you know me, I like to test things out. So I test this thing out at 100%, but this time I use 4500 Kelvin, and 
to the minute guys it actually lasted 30 minutes exactly <laughs> but i didn't stop my test there of course so i tested at 60 percent at 4500 kelvin it lasted 51 minutes and at 30 percent same color temperature it lasted one hour and 46 minutes so pretty decent and of course we have to talk about the fan noise. But when it was at 30% power, the fan kicked in after about 5 minutes and very briefly by the way. So it goes on and off very briefly here and there at 30% power with the room ambient temperature around 70 degrees. And at 60% it does come on pretty much right away after 1 minute and it's just constantly on. And the fan noise I would say is still quieter than the Goras SL60. And at 100% full blast, the fan is full blasting but it's still quieter. Uh, I would say the fan noise is a little bit higher pitch. It's very hard to pick it up by the microphone. And long as you're not recording the microphone like right next to the light, it is very minimal. In fact, I think the street noise is probably louder than the fan noise right now. So this right here is the X100 right now serving as a key light blasting at 45% and yeah, very minimal. I can barely hear it. All right, let's talk about one more pro before we go over the cons. And that is going to be the fact that this is a pretty smart light. So when you turn off this light, it actually remembers the exact setting it was on last. And I know that might be a small thing, but it's so important when you're filming in a studio like this, or you take a lunch break from an interview, you come back, even if the battery is disconnected, even if it's unplugged from the power, it remembers that long as you use the power button. Another thing is that, let me go ahead and turn this on. Watch out for... Good God! Okay, never mind. Maybe off. Maybe off. <laughs> I'm just gonna explain it through B-roll. So it has very high quality knobs, so you can fine tune and micro adjust your dim settings and your color settings here. And what's smart about this is that, you know how if you wanna go from like zero to 100, it takes a long time to spin this? Yeah, all you gotta do is just press it once and twice, and it does this huge incremental halfway jump, so you don't have to keep turning this all the way. All you gotta do is just tap once, and it works the same exact way with the color temperature. Now on the spec sheet, it says that this does have an app support, so you can turn off and turn on the device with the app or even change the brightness in case you're filming a wedding reception and then maybe the bride and mom thinks the light is too bright. You can turn that down via app. But as of this recording right now, the app is not available for me to test. So I'll be testing the app in the future. So I'll let you guys know at least via IG stories. So you can follow me like right here. But let's talk about the cons, AKA the limitation you should be aware of on this light. And the first con I will say has to do with the battery and there is no quarter 20 mount or any kind Kind of mount on this battery. The reason why I think that's going to be super handy is the fact that when you put this on a light stand, it's so light. This thing can go on the teeniest light stand, which is great because you can mount this maybe towards the bottom of the light stand and power it via USB-C. In fact, I had to do that exact thing because I actually shot a little kid's birthday party with Vu from MVU Films. And this thing, I liked it because it's so light. I put it on top of the light stand and I wanted to make sure this battery wasn't weighing the top of the light stand. So I mount it towards the bottom, but because it didn't have any mounting point, kind of did my own MacGyver thing. So this right here is what I came up with. All it is is just small magic arm and I attached a phone holder, which this thing fits perfectly. I did put a little gap tape on here just to be sure because you know kids. But this is a workaround. I would love to see some kind of quarter 20 mount so I can just attach it directly. Or for manufacturing purposes, if Juwon can come up with some kind of attachment, light stand attachment that can be compatible with this mount here, that would be like awesome. And speaking of mounting options, so I would say this light is so versatile, it needs more holes. So it does have two quarter 20 mount right here. And my problem with this is that these holes are so deep in, it's kind of hard to reach. So you really have to like kind of find the hole and get in there. Um, I'm not gonna say that's what she said. But it'd be really, really cool if there was another quarter 20 maybe on the top or even on the side of the battery, like I mentioned, so you can mount it this way. Yeah, that would be like the next step. You know how filmmakers love holes. Our favorite cheese is Swiss cheese. So the next problem I found with this light, it's actually present in a lot of the budget LED lights. And that is when you turn it down really, really low, the color temperature sometimes changes as you get brighter. So I found that at 5,500 Kelvin, so a different color temperature, a slight different range. So at 5,500 Kelvin, I found that going from 6% to 7%, the color temperature changes. Now it's not a huge deal because I'm gonna rarely use this light at that range, but something to be aware of it in case you want to get creative one day but those are minor things so the biggest problem with this literally no pun intended is 
this. Let me just put it next to a light so you guys can see the size difference. So this is the size of the light and this is the power adapter. This feels wrong to me. So that's like getting a tiny little laptop and someone goes, oh yeah, here is a 100 watt power adapter with that laptop. So I thought this needs a solution. Wait a minute. So since I can power this light via USB-C and it can power up to 30 watts, ah, I have this right here. So this is a M1 MacBook Air power adapter, which is 30 watts, USB-C. Plugged it in and it didn't work. So clearly this light right here is picky about what kind of USB-C power adapter you use. So I did a bunch of research and found this one on Amazon. And this right here is a 65 watt power adapter by TechNet. And I test this actually many, many times. Past two shoots, I use this over two hours on each shoot, so it works wonderfully. And when you plug in this light, your light can be up to 60 watt or 60%, which is plenty bright. Oh, okay, so this is why you need a power adapter. <laughs> All right, so that battery wasn't fully charged clearly, so let me go ahead and change that out. Okay, interesting finding. So even if the battery is completely dead and it cuts out, uh, it remembers exact setting on the last setting, so that's good. I thought you had to use the power button to turn it off to remember that setting. No, even if you lose power completely, yeah, it's back at exactly where we started. So where were we? Oh yeah, you need a power adapter. So I went from this package right here to this. Yeah, isn't that so much better for travel? Especially if you're gonna bring more than one of this. Now, if you're a wedding filmmaker, you probably need a cable that's a little bit longer than this. So this is six foot. This right here, is a 15 foot cord. And I also know this one works very well because this is the cable that I use on that two hour shoot. So this cable right here is rated at 100 watt, also from Amazon. So I'm gonna leave the Amazon link down in the description so you guys can check it out if you're interested in getting this. But let's talk about who is this light really for? So we mentioned wedding filmmakers. If you're lighting up reception and you wanna have some small lights so you're not liable for having some giant light on top of your light stand, this is a really good solution, especially with this soft box. So if you're doing like a detail shot imagine having this round instead of like harsh light yeah nice soft light with grid oh that's like the next level detail shot so i'll definitely be trying that out and if you're traveling this is like no brainer travel light for me because it's so light and small you can bring the battery as a backup battery brick even if you're not traveling you're in a studio but you want to hang this light higher maybe to a ceiling i'm much comfortable like mounting this on a ceiling than <laughs> <laughs> this. Yeah, this against my head, I think my head's gonna lose. But wise man once said, What you can make is not bound by your idea, but rather, your idea is bound by the knowledge of what tool is available for what you can make. And now, you know one more tool that's available to you. And by the way, that was an AI voiceover tool. We may or may not talk about that topic down the road. And that's what this channel is all about, guys. We'll keep exploring tools and maybe it'll help you spark some new ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, lighter.